Hi, this is Chris with HowToAbleton.com, and I'm going to make a sound. It may be a little boring, but you know what? It's going to open your mind to some creativity. So here's what we're going to use. We're going to go into Operator, and I'm going to turn this on. Let's spread it out. Okay, there's a noise. Here's our notes. Boring. Let's change that. MIDI effect. Uh, we're going to use the envelope, the Max for Live envelope, a very underused plugin by a lot of people. Some of us who do more sound design stuff are aware of it, but a lot of people don't. So if you have Suite, I believe it started in 8. Uh, if you have Ableton 8 and higher, Suite, you'll get Max for Live. So. Uh, and I believe this is in all of them, all the different versions of Max for Live. I don't think it's anything new. I'm using 9.7, but I've seen this forever. Um, this is the beta version of 9.7, but you should be able to do the same exact thing. So what is an envelope? I'm not going to give you the nerd definition, but just look. It's the shape. It'd be like how you turn the knob one time when it's set to trigger. So you would real quick just turn it up and then kind of down and then really down fast. So think of it as how you would turn a knob in this instance. So right now you have that patch, a sine wave, one oscillator and operator. So this feature right here is the important part, map. So I can map this to this. That's the level of this second oscillator. Now listen to what happens when I play it. it. Sounds like a Seinfeld bass. It's a little bit of FM sound. So let's add another one. And we're gonna map this to the third oscillator. More intense. Sounds like a horn. Let's change the shape of the second envelope going to the third oscillator. I know. It's a lot to remember. This is attached to this. In fact, I could rename this, but I'm not going to do it. So you get a little more control over how it's sounding. Let's change this to loop. The first one, and we'll speed it up. And see, it's always on because it's looping. You see what it's doing down here to the level of the second oscillator? It's just freaking out. So let's do this. Let's change the attack time. Let's change the amount so it's not really going too nuts. Let's add another envelope. Well, and let's just do something. Let's map this envelope to this amount. Okay. So let's make this sound even better. We're going to grab a simple delay, put it down here. I'm going to minimize these envelope effects we've already used to get some real estate here. Right click on the simple delay top and I'm going to change it to repitch so the delay time will actually repitch the sound as it's the faster time the higher it'll go up in pitch. The, the, you slow the time down it'll go down. About 40% dry wet feedback same about 40%. Turn the sync off so we're dealing in milliseconds and turn the link off so I can control the right and the left independently. Turn down to one second. Let's play it. You get a little bit of a comb filtering sound because it, it is delaying but only at one millisecond. Let's turn... Now you get the Haas effect because I'm delaying one side further than the other, but we'll discuss that later. Max for Live envelope. I gotta put it way over here. Let's minimize operator. I'm gonna map the left one here. Another one here. And this one to the right. Okay. Sounds kind of cool, but I want a wide field. I want this to feel like it's just going out into space a little bit. So I'm going to change the shape of the one that's assigned to the right delay time. Maybe the amount. 
Uh, let's do a little bit of change the release time. Maybe turn the sustain. Let's change this one a little bit too. And uh, we'll turn the amount up. So let's hear it now. <laughs> So this amount is like the strength of the envelope. So this amount will adjust on this left one right here. This will adjust the left side, the strength of how far it's going to throw. If you were turning this knob, how far it's going to turn it up or down. So more intense. Hear that left kind of rung out a little longer? Let's turn it down. It's a little too long right now. Let's make it a little bit even. Okay. Let's grab a verb, give it some space, low cut, uh, let's do all the way wet so we can hear what it's going to sound like. Okay, let's back that off. Okay, so what would happen if we messed with the size? You almost get a metallic kind of a, a ring. So let's grab an envelope and map it to that. Why not? We're going to be mapping all envelopes everywhere. Map. Size. And you can hear what it's doing. You can also watch it. It's... Oh, it's changing the room size and it's causing these artifacts that sound metallic, almost like you're in a metal, a metal room that's really wide. Let's turn the power of that envelope down so it's not super strong. Let's change the pre-delay a little bit. Okay, so I could do this for days, just keep assigning envelopes, and if you pay attention to up here my um, CPU, now I'm running a 12 core Mac, so I shouldn't have any CPU problems, but really it's idling where it would normally would, I mean you got to keep in mind I got screen capture, I've got audio capture going, uh, I think I have, I think I even have Final Cut on in the background, um, so all this stuff running and the CPU is basically sitting at idle. So there are plenty of ways to get really good sounds out of stock Ableton plugins, especially if you have Suite and you really dive into the Max for Live plugins. Uh, the LFO and the Envelope 2, I think, are uh, those are almost the kind of plugins I couldn't live without when I'm when I'm doing sound design. So I hope this was useful to you and you can use it in your own productions. Hopefully, it opens your mind to using this to be able to assign these to Massive Serum. Uh, anything, sins, track volume, pans, you can assign these plugins to anything inside Ableton and really get creative instead of just using the stock boring um, setups you're used to using. Venture out, try this, put it to good use. Thanks.